Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn with a card showcasing the new You've Got Mail dies. This is a die collection that coordinates with an older stamp set from Lawn Fawn, which I absolutely love. This is a stamp set that I've been wanting some dies to, to coordinate with for quite some time because I think it's a really cute stamp set to use with Lawn Fawn's critters. I'm going to stamp all of the images I'm using here on some smooth cardstock. This is the Bristol Smooth Cardstock, and this is what I like to use when using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I think it gives a really smooth, um, seamless type of look when using these markers, and that's what I'm going to use to color with today. The Little Bird is from the Lawn Fawn Year 4 stamp set. This cute little skunk was actually the gift with purchase for the Black Friday um, last year, and it will be available in coming months, but I hadn't had a chance to use him yet, and I thought he would be really cute. The larger of the two letters here, or I guess I only have one so far, this letter is from the You've Got Mail stamp set. So I've got the mailbox and the letter from You've Got Mail, and I'm gonna start coloring in my images. This is one of those cards that kind of evolved as I started working on it and kind of imagining how I wanted to create my scene. I'm using two shades kind of all the way through for each different image to do all of my blending. So it's pretty simple. I went in with my darkest color first and then I'm blending it out with my lighter color. I love how these blend together so nicely. You could also incorporate some water if you want to, but many times I like to just go ahead and use the two markers, blend those out, and color in my images. Unlike Copic markers, you are going to want to make sure that you don't go over your image too many times or it will um, start to peel the paper because these are water-based markers. For the pink envelope, all of the um, Color numbers are shown below. I hope this kind of helps maybe show exactly which colors I'm using for which images. So I colored in the pink and the red envelopes. This smaller envelope is from the Gleeful Gardens stamp set. Now you might notice that the skunk is colored and those blades of grass from the Gleeful Gardens. What happened was I colored in the skunk and I got a little too aggressive with my grays and the parts of him that need to be white just didn't look white anymore. With the greens, there was nothing wrong with the green grass. However, it ended up being a little too olive greenish. As I started working on this and, and finishing up coloring in the images, I realized I needed it to be a little bit more bright, more springy green because my landscape is gonna be much, much more green. So you'll see that here in just a little bit. Now the skunk, I did stamp him again and went ahead and colored him back in using those two colors but going much lighter with my lightest color on the areas where he's supposed to be white. I'll go ahead and use all the coordinating dies for the stamped images here, run those through my Big Shot die cutting machine and set them aside. I'm gonna go ahead and take some watercolor cardstock now and die cut two A2 sized rectangles. If you've watched any of my videos before, especially the scene builder ones, you know that I do this a lot. One of those is going to be my background. The other one I'm going to die cut my landscape type piece from. In this case, it's going to be a hilly border. I only cut a portion of one there because that's all the cardstock or watercolor cardstock I had. Then I'm going to use one of the new simple stitched hillside borders. This is the one that has the most arc. It's going to be your highest type of hill. And I am just kind of laying that on my rectangle so that I can make sure and and have enough room for the mailbox, which is going to be the highest point, the mailbox with the bird sitting on it, of this card. Once I have those two pieces die cut, I'm going to apply some Distress Ink to both panels. On the background, instead of a traditional blue sky background, I really like the Spun Sugar and Picked Raspberry Distressed Inks worked together. So I'm gonna blend those two together so that I get a kind of seamless transition from the darker color to the lighter one. 
Then I'll go ahead and skip over real quick and use Twisted Citron and Mowed Lawn Distress inks for my hilly border. I'm using a scrap piece of paper to hold my border down so that I don't get any finger marks in it. I'll go back with my lighter color then and blend that out so I get a really nice, smooth, seamless transition on the green border as well. I'm going to spritz both of these pieces with some water from a mini mister, let it sit for about 30 to 60 seconds, and then dab it up with a dry paper towel. It's going to give me really great distressed backgrounds. Now to add some even greater um, interest to this background for my card, I'm going to take the Falling Heart stencil from Simon Says Stamp and apply the Spun Sugar and Picked Raspberry Distress inks through this stencil. So up near the top where it's much lighter, I'm going to go with the Spun Sugar and then gradually work down to a little bit of Picked Raspberry. I'm purposely not using or applying the ink, I guess, through the stencil um, in every single hole because I wanted it to be a little bit more random. Now this is where I decided my grass was too dark, my original grass. So I'm going to go ahead and color in this grass with a couple of more bright shades that are going to coordinate with my grassy border on the on my card here much better. So they're going to coordinate with that Twisted Citron and Mowed Lawn. The other colors were great. They just weren't quite springy enough, I guess, for this particular image. Now these little blades of grass, I'm going to go ahead and do those too. And I'm going to need several of those for my card. I also decided I needed a cute little snail from the Gleeful Garden stamp set. So I'm going to color him in, or her, in with some pinks and reds, and then use that gray, the same gray I used for the skunk, on the antenna. Once I have that done, I will go ahead and die cut all of these images. And I stamped the greeting using the Lawn Fawn Lobster Red ink there kind of in the upper right corner of the card. And then I'm going to take the cute little heart from the stinking cute stamp set and add some red stamped hearts to the background. Once I have all of those things done, I'm ready to put it all together. This is the fun part where you build the scene of the card. I'll attach the landscape hill there first, and then I'm going to start with my mailbox. I used a craft knife to cut a little slip slit in the mailbox so that I can slide in one of those letters so it looks like one of the letters is going inside of the mailbox. Then from that I am going to go ahead and start building out. So I'm going to start with the mailbox and then I'm going to tuck some blades of grass next to it so it's kind of partially behind and then partially in front. That's just one way to really make the images look a little bit more natural when some of the elements overlap. So from there on the right side I've got some blades of grass, both a large and a small, the cute little skunk, a snail, and another small blade of grass. Then on the left side I'm going to have another large blade of grass, a small one, and a letter sticking out from underneath the side of the mailbox. I'm using glue dots to attach everything. So I'm using either the medium Zots bling glue dot, Zots medium glue dots, or the bling sized glue dots, depending on the size of the image. I'll have a little bird on top of the mailbox with a letter, tuck in the letter inside that I cut that little slit with the craft knife, finish with a couple more letters there on the ground, and then I'll take the Sakura black gel pen to add detail to eyes and noses. And then I'm simply ready to attach the entire thing to a white card base. This is a side fold card base from Simon Says Stamp and that will finish off my card design. Thanks for watching this video showcasing Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. Here are a couple more love themed cards featuring Lawn Fawn that you might be interested in. Please subscribe for weekly card making and stamping videos. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.